This is Bumper to Bumper TV. Not so long ago, the sighting of a battery electric vehicle on the road was a rare occurrence and it was easier to find a payphone than a publicly accessible charging station. Now, nearly every legacy automaker and several startup brands are building and selling fully electric vehicles in almost all segments from compacts to full-size SUVs. The share of the total auto market has grown from 2.7% in January of 2021 to a nearly 6% share in October of 2025, according to data compiled by Cox Automotive. So why hasn't the driving public embraced this new tech on a wider scale? It is the infrastructure. It is the charger anxiety. I call it charger anxiety, not range anxiety, because if we all are just a little honest with ourselves, no one needs more than 350 miles range, which is what the Ionic 9 has about, um, on any given day that they're driving. It's really more, am I going to be able to find a charger when I really need it? Meanwhile, the number of charging stations has grown from a little more than 5,000 locations nationwide in 2011 to nearly 80,000 places to plug in by October of 2025. Situated near shopping centers, busy traffic corridors, and some government-owned locations, there are more than 239,000 ports available. That expansion in the number of places to charge came due to government support at the federal and local levels. A program got rolled out called NEVI, and the idea with NEVI was is that there should be DC fast charging um, every 50 miles and a mile off the highway. So you saw that. And then the second phase of that was CFI. And so CFI basically predicated that there would be charging infrastructure in urban cores and hubs and in tribal communities and agricultural communities. If there was a challenge to the plan, it might have something to do with the different kinds of connecting plugs. Some public locations offer this kind of connection for level two and three charging. It's officially designated as J1772. Another is this connector, the Chatamo, originally developed by Japanese automakers. A third is the NAX, or North American charging standard, created by Tesla for its own high-speed charge network. These different systems contributed to a type of recharging segregation. Now many domestic EV makers are going with the NAX standard and offering adapters to work around the different systems. In short, that addresses the compatibility issue as technology evolves. It continues to be station over here has this, station over here has this, and you've got to be real careful about where you're going versus if we pull multiple standards into the same place and make it available for people, just like we do with gas, where you have a diesel pump, you've got your unlit at 89, you got your unlit at 93, you know, and so you can pick and choose. Meanwhile, some automakers are realigning their full battery electric offerings to include more hybrids and plug-in hybrids, which can also take advantage of public charging infrastructure. That approach may just be a detour in the long-range shift away from fossil fuel-powered vehicles. The automotive manufacturers have invested billions of dollars into their electrification strategy. And so, so to speak, the proverbial train has left the station. And so the idea is, is that it's going to be very difficult for the legacy auto manufacturers and that is domestic as well as um, some of the international manufacturers to now change their strategy. It will be interesting to see how all of this plays out over the next few years. I'm Greg Morrison.